I have always been fascinated by natural selection simulators, and I would stare at these simulations that other people have created for hours on end watching these virtual creatures evolve over time. I finally decided to make my own natural selection simulator, but I decided to take it one step further by adding neural networks to every creature in the simulation. If you don't know what a neural network is or how they work, you will by the end of this video. The first thing I did with this project was created a normal natural selection simulator without any neural networks. Each creature starts off with 10 energy at the beginning, and they use one energy every second. If the creature cannot find any food within 10 seconds, they will die. If a creature can survive well enough to collect 30 energy, that is when they will reproduce and pass their traits on to their offspring. Each of those traits will either increase or decrease by a small random amount. So if the offspring gets lucky and randomly increases the correct traits that allow it to survive better than its parent did, then that new creature will have a higher chance of surviving long enough to reproduce. And that is basically how natural selection works in the real world as well. Currently the only traits being affected in the simulation are the size and the speed of the creatures, and there are no cons to being infinitely big or infinitely fast. I could easily fix this problem by making it cost more energy the bigger or faster they get. However, it is fun watching these guys reach mock speed, and I am planning on removing these when I implement the neural network anyways. So the best strategy for these guys right now is just become as fast as possible. And that is what I predicted, that being faster would be the best way to go. And that was true. However, what I didn't predict was that being bigger would also be better as well. When I implemented the random size change, I didn't think there was going to be any benefit to being bigger. I was just adding this feature so that I could possibly use it in the future. I thought that the creatures would just randomly change size because right now speed is the only trait that matters. But it turned out that being larger meant that these creatures could push the smaller ones out of the way and even push them off the map. And this was not something that I foresaw or predicted, and it was really cool to see that these creatures learned something that I didn't know, even though they're so simple at the current state. I then did a little experiment to try to make size matter more, and what I did was implement some form of cannibalism. So if the creature was bigger than another, it would be able to eat that creature and treat it as a food source. This ended up making size the most important factor by a long shot. In fact, the speed didn't even matter anymore, and that was actually changing randomly at this point. And these guys got pretty big rather quickly, to the point where they were just spawning and eating each other as they spawned because they became the size of the entire map. But now that we've had our fun with the natural selection side of things, let's strip away all those traits and instead give them a brain in the form of a neural network. So right now these creatures are dumb and only know how to move towards the food because I told them how to do it. But now I'm going to remove those instructions and they are going to flop around randomly. I don't want them to move around randomly and just starve and die, so being the benevolent god of their existence, I am going to decide to give them a brain in the form of a neural network. And this is kind of like that old saying where if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day, but if you stuff a neural network in his head, his children might have some small chance of surviving. Is that not how it goes? Artificial intelligence can seem very complicated, but the basic building block of most artificial intelligence is the neural network, which honestly isn't as complicated as it seems. Before I just start throwing around the word neural network, I want you to truly understand what it means and how they work. The goal of a neural network is to take some input, do some calculations, and then give you the output. For instance, if you were trying to use a neural network to figure out if a picture contained a dog or a cat, the input to the network would be the picture, and the output would be whether or not this was a dog or a cat. In our situation, the input to the network is going to be the X and Y position of the closest piece of food relative to the creature, and our output is going to be which direction we should move next. This is controlled by two variables. The first one controls moving forward and backward, so if it's negative, it will be moving backwards. If it is positive, it will move forward. And the same is true for left and right, just if it's negative, it will go left, and if it's positive, it will go right. Normally there is something called back propagation, but in our case we won't actually need it because it is built into natural selection by default. Back propagation is when you update the network based on how accurate its output is. In the case of the dog and cat example, if you gave it a picture of a dog, but it said it was a cat, back propagation would basically say to the network, good attempt, but that was wrong, go adjust some of the values that incorrectly said that this was a cat, and maybe you will get it right next time. In our situation, back propagation is the death and the reproduction. If the network is wrong, it just dies and there is no getting it right next time. But if it is right, then it will have more networks similar to it brought into existence, so that is the reward for being correct. Unlike back propagation, our networks cannot learn from their mistakes because if the network is bad, they just die. So although this isn't as efficient, it is more realistic to the way that natural selection actually works in the real world, because normally you don't learn after you die, so yeah. So we know that we have the inputs and the outputs, but what is actually happening in that area in the middle? Well, the network is made up of a bunch of layers and nodes. Each layer holds a bunch of nodes within it. 
Each node is connected to every node from the layer before it. And each of these connections has a number associated with it called the weight. And the weight is basically how strong a connection is between the nodes. In order to explain things better, we are only going to focus on one node at a time. To figure out the value of the current node, the computer multiplies the inputs times the weight for every connection that is associated with this node, and then it adds them all together. In shorter terms, it gets the sum of the weights times the inputs. Each node also has its own number associated with it that is called a bias, and a bias is just the number that gets added or subtracted to that final sum that we just calculated. So basically, the way you calculate a node is just by taking the sum of the weights times the inputs and adding a bias at the end. Once we get the value for the node, we need to decide whether or not we want to actually use it. We do this by using something called an activation function. And this basically just says whether or not the current node should be active or not. There are many different activation functions, but in our case, we're going to be using one that is called rectified linear, also known as ReLU. But these names are more complicated than they need to be because it basically just means that if the value is less than zero, then our node is off. If the value is greater than zero, then we just keep the current value. And that's basically all there is to it. Now the computer is just going to go through every node in the network and make the same calculations. And when it's done, we should have our outputs that we will use in the simulation. One thing to note is that the weights and the biases are not changing while the creature is alive. These weights and biases only change when the creature reproduces and the weights and the biases are the network. They're the only numbers that are associated with anything in the network. The child will adopt all the weights and biases from its parent but they will all be shifted by a small random amount, which is exactly the same way that our traits were being changed in the beginning, but now it is the weights and biases of the network that are being affected. If the child's network is better than the parents, then the child will have a better chance of surviving and reproducing just like before. Now that the creatures finally have their brain, we can rerun the simulation and see if they are able to learn and survive. I hope this actually works or else this whole video would be for nothing. But if you're seeing this, it probably means that it worked. So minor spoiler, let's see what happens. They're still flopping around, but that's the point. The first generation is supposed to be bad, but it looks like one of them is actually eating some food, but it's only eating it in one direction. We could work with that. I think that that one actually reproduced a few times. So now we have a bunch of creatures that only know how to move one way. And now it just takes one creature to take that next giant leap and move a different direction than the rest of them. And once we let this simulation run a little bit longer, you will see that it actually looks very similar to the movement in the very beginning when I actually hard coded in their movement. So they learned how to move on their own the same exact way that I taught them. So I guess I could have just left in my if statements in the beginning and we could have just skipped this whole long tedious process, but we wouldn't have learned anything in the process. And that was the whole point. Now you know how neural network works and you won't just think of AI as a random magic box anymore. You will understand that there are numbers associated to each network that makes artificial intelligence work. If you were into video editing or programming, then you might like to know the fact that every single jump cut in this video was made using a program that I created to make jump cuts for me automatically, which I will be releasing in one of my next few videos. If it's already out, it will be here. If not, then you should subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when it comes out. And I will see you guys in the next one.